Hello students, uh, we were discussing the serial active search code acquisition technique for FFH MFSK system. Uh, today we will do some analysis uh, on that code acquisition mechanism for FFH MFSK. Quickly we will revisit the block diagram that we were uh, discussing. You have seen this block diagram in the last module where the incoming signal yt was uh, mix getting mixed with the in the with the locally generated pn sequence and uh, and uh, which is also driving the frequency synthesizer we uh, understand that this is a frequency hopping uh, communication mechanism so frequency synthesizer will be generating the hopping sequence and uh, it is a fast frequency hopping uh, mechanism that means that within a uh, symbol duration or tone duration, there are multiple hop frequencies over which the same signal is uh, spread. And we have utilized the MFSK signaling mechanism that means for transmission of a typical signal, we have a uh, set of the tones from where actually the for a typical symbol or typical tone is assigned. So, we are dealing with now two different frequencies, one is the modulation frequency, uh, we call it modulation tone and another is the hopping frequency, which is actually uh, the frequency that is getting uh, generated locally here in the receiver and the pattern of that generation will be governed by the secret key and frequency synthesizer will generate that hop frequency. So, uh, these two uh, different frequency terms that are there inside uh, with the incoming signal, we are now multiplying with the mainly the hopping frequency to de-hop the signal. So, this is a, a disk spreader or the mixer whatever you say and uh, the signals are actually then passed through a bandpass filter having a bandwidth of capital B. We saw that uh, then the filtered signal is passed through a correlator, which is a non-coherent detector architecture. So, this NC stands for the non-coherent demodulation architecture, which demodulates at the frequency of the IF frequency plus the uh, symbol frequency or symbol tone frequency. We understand for different uh, symbol, we have the different tone associated with it. So, the, the center frequency of the demodulator, so there is a bank of demodulator and the center frequency of each and every demodulator is uh, synced with the different frequency stages of the frequency modulation, modulation tones and any one of the at a particular moment any one depending upon which uh, symbol was uh, transmitted hence which modulating tone was transmitted, any one of the demodulator architecture output will give you the maximum or the peak. Uh, at a particular time and uh, hence this maximum is uh, picking up over a duration of n into t h i mean equal to the symbol duration. You will select uh, any one of these bank of the uh, modulator output and uh, then it will be threshold compared and will adjust or update the clock that was the block diagram as we understood last time. Based on this only today we will try to uh, write down the map equations of y t x t and then try to find out z t and we will try to realize how that the output the acquisition mechanism is uh, obtained. Uh, so, from here we also understood the time frequency diagram of this um, fast frequency hopping um, MFSK signal. And the diagram will be little bit changed if you change the um, system from fast frequency hopping to slow frequency hopping. The diagram that I am showing here, it is basically the fast frequency hopping. What we found that is, uh, this was the MFSK sequence and the, these are the frequency of each sequence coming and the transmitted hop sequence was given by f1 to f4. So, within the duration of one MFSK symbol, you have the four hopping frequencies. So, the hop frequency is four times higher than the symbol frequency and uh, the received FFH MFSK signal hence will be governed by the FSK plus f1 plus some del f, del f is contributed by the Doppler effect 
of the and which Doppler effect comes between uh, transmitter and receiver if any one of them are moving or both of them are also moving. And uh, the, that uh, we understand that the Doppler frequency as if the speed is constant for the for the receiver or the transmitter, then the Doppler frequency we have assumed to be added as a constant fashion in each and every received sequence interval. And uh, we also assumed that uh, local synthesizer, frequency synthesizer of the receiver is not properly time matched with the transmitter um, frequency synthesizer and hence there is a time error also associated with it. So, this diagram completely talks about that there is a time error associated uh, given by EPSA and there is a frequency error associated given by the Doppler. And uh, hence the receiver frequency synthesizer because of this error in the time domain, the all the um, frequencies will be shifted in this fashion and hence you will get the mixer output. Uh, the mixer output of the receiver frequency as well as the receive signal and the receiver locally generated frequency synthesizer output, frequency synthesizer output after multiplication uh, in the mixer and the output of the mixer you will be ending up with this F i f because your incoming signal is F 1 plus F s k plus del f and the frequency synthesizer is generating a frequency of F 1 plus del f. So, after beating you will be left with F i f plus this del f plus this F s k. So, like that all the patterns will come serially and uh, remember one thing the decoded output uh, will be high only for the duration over which that overlapping is happening. Overlapping of the um, uh, difference frequency mixer output and the receive signal, whatever we do not know the time axis overlapping is there for that duration only the decoder will be able to give you an some output. In this assumption, uh, we have a uh, assumption uh, that uh, it is 4 times remember the 4 times is the hopping frequency than the incoming frequency. Assumption number 2, we have a Doppler contributed uh, by del f Doppler frequency and uh, we have a timing error attributed by uh, EPSA and uh, hence we understand that the frequency previous uh, to this uh, point of the context or point of our interest and the frequency next moment and next instant both will be different than the current hopping frequency. So, the hopping frequency at the previous section and the hopping frequency and the uh, at, at the next section they are different at any moment and you will be able to get the output of the detector wherever the overlap will be having only. We may come back to this diagram uh, if we have some confusion in the successive section. We will start with the uh, signal, the, the transmitted signal defined by uh, y t over 1 symbol duration and y t is here. Okay. So, we are currently writing the equation for y t and y t is given by log square root of 2 e t p t minus i t a summed over i to capital N and cos of omega i plus omega s j t plus theta i. Remember this p t is the power of the transmitted uh, signal as well as we are considering that this is a received signal power. T h is the hopping duration, p t is the basic uh, waveform, chief waveform. Omega i are the in the index i corresponds to the hopping frequency at the i th moment and j is the index of the modulation tone frequency associated with the current symbol. So, i will be telling over which hopping frequency you are in, j will be telling what modulation tone you are dealing with. So, uh, remember over a particular uh, duration of the symbol, the j will not change, but i will keep on changing and we are considering that par symbol we are having capital N number of the hops. So, this uh, hopping frequency will change from i to capital N con with a constant of s j that is the meaning of fast frequency hopping we understand. And um, these are the frequencies expressed in the radian and uh, angular frequencies expressed in the radian per second and theta i is the corresponding phase with respect uh, to the hopping frequency i. 
remember uh, we consider that uh, we cannot uh, actually guarantee that uh, whenever hopping is going on uh, there will be a same phase um, I mean relative to every hopping that is impossible. So, every hopping is associated with some amount of the different kind of the phase associated to that. So, that cannot be guaranteed that is why theta is also varying with respect to your index hopping index i. And expression for your omega i and omega s as I expressed they should be equal to 2 pi f i and 2 pi f s j. So, this is a signal uh, that has entered uh, into the front end of the receiver and this is actually the signal transmitted also from the transmitter. Next slide. We have uh, seen that P t is nothing but the pulse so given uh, basic pulse shape and we will redefine what is the meaning of this P t is here. P t is nothing but within this hopping duration P t's value will be equal to 1 otherwise P t will be 0. And uh, if we assume that the received signal is also affected by the Doppler frequency and it is having a Doppler shift of del f and uh, there is no timing delay associated with it. If I first uh, only introduce uh, changes due to the Doppler shift then uh, the received signal y dash t will be written as like this. Remember that earlier w i plus w s j is getting associated with an another shift attributed by the Doppler shift of del f. And uh, now, we are also associating the noise uh, incoming noise associated with that and remember this is an additive wide Gaussian noise process n t is and n t is having it is a complex Gaussian noise. So, it is having a cos as well as sin I mean in phase and q phase component written here. And uh, remember like others two guys uh, we have uh, added uh, we have represented Doppler shift in terms of its uh, angular domain and del omega will be represented by 2 pi del f. So, now the equation 1.1 is now changed to 1.3 when Doppler shift is added or uh, contributed into the received signal model and noise is added complex wide Gaussian noise is added also. Uh, after that uh, when the dehopping will be happening the dehopped signal the x t that signal will be looked like looked like the that is a we understand that in the dehop signal we cannot uh, we cannot uh, omit the error that we have uh, considered in the time frequency diagram. The error was uh, in terms of epsa and when the dehopping will be done if that synchronization is not done I mean time synchronization between the frequency synthesizer of receiver and the frequency synthesizer of transmitter is not reestablished. Uh, the received signal dehopped signal will reflect that error definitely in the time. So, T minus k T h will be further delayed by this error time error and you will be also getting ending up with the uh, related term coming from the frequency section and uh, this is the k th uh, for the k th uh, frequency we are dealing with and we are having the intermediate uh, sorry the I f uh, frequency uh, ended up with after the mixer is multiplied and the bandpass filter has done its job. And uh, theta r is the remaining amount of the phase or the remaining phase associated with the dehop signal. Remember if this delay uh, this relative delay uh, it is relative to the receiving hopping signal it is assumed that uh, this delay is not less than the hopping interval or hopping duration T h. So, we are consider that uh, we will get the dehop signal the decoder output will be able to give you something I mean some output will be coming out only if your error is less than equal to the hopping duration. If this hopping duration if it crosses the hopping duration then it will be considered that no signal at all correlation will occur over the because there is no common overlap and you will not get anything at the output of the decoder. So, the perfect 0 is expected to get at the output of the detector. Uh, we understand that uh, the incoming signal is now uh, having an uh, having a Doppler effect having a time uh, error effect and so the mixer output uh, z t 
the mixer output will be uh, showing if I try to see the incoming signal with this all this kind of the errors associated with it. We will be able to see that the mixer output is now uh, will be reflecting both the Doppler error or the effect of the Doppler as well as he will also reflect the error of the timing. And uh, this uh, has got expanded because we have also incorporated the noise complex Gauss no Gaussian noise term. We have also got a new term here which is called the O x which denotes uh, the order of the it denotes the term of the order of this x. And remember this uh, theta phi i r what we are seeing here the related is uh, the equivalent error in the phase it will be given by the theta i minus theta r I mean receive associated phase associated with the ith hopping and the received uh, phase uh, plus the um, omega i minus omega f into multiplied by the epsa term. And, uh, if I consider that the error is less than this uh, timing duration hop duration, then the double frequency term will be coming up and uh, so it will be collapsing to the single sum like 1.5. So, fundamentally this is the term that is uh, coming up at the output of the mixer because of the presence of the both uh, frequency error as well as the timing error in a FFH MFSK signal. So, now we will enter into the detector section and we will try to see that if I now uh, detect it, I mean in the detector it will multiply with the signal in the i th path as well as in the q th path by uh, the in phase and the quadrature phase component. Remember the detector prior to the detector there was a band pass filter right and the band pass filter has filtered the incoming signal at the frequency of f i f or equivalently omega i f the term we have seen in the z t. So, if it is tuned to omega i f, so this uh, decoder will also be tuned at i f plus the uh, frequency angular frequency of the uh, modulating uh, of the modulation tone and uh, both the in phase and quadrature phase uh, will be uh, will be will be created and we will be a continuing the in phase and q phase. Uh, integration and square it is basically the correlator architecture multiplication and integration and then the squaring it up with the envelope detector output we will take and uh, finally, adding up both the term we will feed uh, it to the decision device. Uh, so, uh, here remember that uh, based on the choice of the band pass filter frequency or intermediate frequency it is the intermediate frequency that we are choosing and based on the I f filter we are here also the synchronization with that IA filter needs to be established by the decoder. So, decoder does what? Decoder uh, takes the incoming signal from the IA filter and he uh, creates uh, the two pass he creates uh, he, he separately operates over the in phase as well as the Q phase part of the incoming signal and does the integration sampling and uh, square law envelope uh, detection it is basically because it is a non coherent detector going on and we will see actually the mathematical output of this detector. Let us first consider over the upper term, the upper term is the in phase path coming inside the detector. This in phase path uh, will be we understand from the last equation 1.5 that with the in phase path now the detected signal. Uh, I mean the cos uh, that section will be multiplying and if my cos uh, let us go back. If I multiply with the cos to omega i f plus omega s l and we had earlier the terms of omega s j omega i f and del omega, <laughs> then we will be ending up with uh, omega s j plus del omega plus omega s l t and omega i f term will be going out because uh, they will be dotting with each other with each other. Similarly, for the uh, noise terms also you will be seeing the same kind of the operation is going on and uh, this sound frequency again uh, the sound frequency in the higher part is neglected since they will be filtered out in the correlation process. Similar to the i th part in the q th part also you will be seeing the same kind of the expression, but these are the um, uh, q phase components or the sign components will be 
reflected here and uh, the original signal section the upper portion which is the signal section he will be out of the intermediate frequency term. Remember if you look uh, carefully in that in phase and the q phase term they are divided into two halves. The first half is basically the in uh, signal section the lower part is basically the noise component. So, in next slide you will we will write down this i and q component as the i s plus i n. And remember that we can it easily show that the summation multiplying by the noise terms this guy the noise terms multiplied with this uh, sum term actually this it forms finally a constant and it is a as it is a wide Gaussian noise. So, it will be scaled by a factor of 1 by root 2 it is easily provable. And as I told in the last uh, slide that uh, each of these in phase and q phase components are combination of the noise section as well as as a signal section. For the noise uh, associated with the in phase uh, we will mention it as n i t and the noise associated with the q phase the whole term will be now considered to be n q t. If we consider that uh, the first one to be i s then obviously, you can write down 1.8 and 1.9 as 1.110 and 1.11 simply. And now, uh, this uh, let us look inside this uh, noise terms and uh, remember these two noise terms uh, if I see the what is coming for these noise terms at the output of the correlators. The correlator will take it individually both of them and it will integrate over the interval uh, of our interest which is the hopping interval and average it out. And if we do the same for the i and the q phase. Uh, we will find that um, the variance also can be easily calculated and both the variances for the for the two paths will be equal and will be given by the eta 0 by 2 by t h where eta 0 by 2 will be your uh, two sided power spectral density of the noise wide Gaussian noise and t h uh, is our hopping duration. Uh, it follows also that if I now look in that was the noise section. If I look now into the signal section, the signal uh, output, the signal component will have the output, uh, the output of my this adr circuit. So uh, this will be i s square for the signal section. This will be the q s section square, and this will be the added, adr. It will be added up here. So this adr output now we are looking into this equation 1.15. And definitely, it will be the individual integration and then squaring up. So, correlation and then the squaring up according to the architecture. It is will be the first correlation, it will be the integration part, then the sampled integration part is getting squared up for both the parts. So, the same thing we have done in the equation, nothing else. And if you solve it by substituting the values of the i t and q t from here, equation number 1.8 and 1.9 where we will be ending up, we will be ending up with this equation of the p sin of this guy. Capital P is the power of the transmitted uh, signal, del f we understand is the contribution coming from the Doppler frequency or the Doppler shift, f s j is the frequency associated with the j th modulation tone and remember this l is the frequency associated with the l th modulation tone. Actually, this substitution is coming because of this errors, uh, del f error, as you are actually uh, you may get actually some interference from the neighboring neighboring modulating tone, and so the difference of these two tones uh, will be reflected in the computation of the i s square plus q s square. Also, you will be able to see that there is a contribution uh, from the uh, timing error section. And so, the it will not get multiplied directly with the T a square, there is a difference between the remaining time period for which actually detector is creating the output. This is the remaining time interval that is coming into consideration in computing the i s square, the total value of signal component. And uh, the correlation of this uh, frequency hopping signal for a uh, frequency error del f and the time error epsa. It is equivalently same as if I uh, when p is considered to be 1 and if f s j and f s l are actually considered to be same. I mean there is no ambiguity and we could properly select uh, the modulation tone in the receiver if that is the situation. Then this whole equation will look like this, will look like this. We call this factor as ambiguity function. So, we will coming down here 
considering that my error the timing error is much much less than the hopping duration and uh, this ambiguity will come down here considering that my p is equal to 1 and then there is no ambiguity from the f s and f s j detection. Uh, this uh, when this transmission modulation frequency transmitters modulation frequency is same as the receiver symbol frequency that is situation when this f s j and f s i is equal f s j is equal to f s l and so that this square root of this term will now come to this fact if p is not considered to be 1 definitely. So, it will be coming like uh, this and uh, now consider a case when the frequency error time uh, times hop duration this frequency error times this hop duration I mean uh, th minus this guy multiplied by this frequency error time it is so very very small. It is so small that in the um, uh, it, is, it is very small compared to the unity and um, the timing error is also very small compared to one hop time. So, uh, this is close to very very small close to unity and this is very small compared to this uh, tau h. If this is the situation and we assume that this uh, non coherent f s k modulation is going on and uh, we are thinking that the modulation tone are kept in such a way that uh, the minimum gap between two tone uh, the nearest tones is um, they are separated by 1 by th hertz uh, to ensure the orthogonality if we consider like that. Then this I s s square by Q s s square the signal component will be boiling down to this guy. And uh, it can be easily understood that when f s l is being detected by the demodulator for f s j when f s j transmitted, but f s l uh, we have detected then we will have at most uh, no component kind of at the output of the detector, because uh, this difference uh, will be coming almost 0 and then you will be ending up with the perfect 0 situation, because of sin n pi is equal to 0. Uh, so, basic uh, point is that uh, the detector is the output is uh, coming perfectly 0 and you are not getting anything. Mm, if the, the tone frequencies or modulation tone frequencies are not uh, matching and uh, desired signal you will only getting uh, non zero response only you are getting when the time frequency errors are basically the condition is time frequency error should be basically small and uh, you will be getting at the output uh, with the for the desired signal only. Otherwise, actually the desired signal output is expected to get 0 complete 0 if the a time frequency errors are significantly high and uh, also the modulating tone frequency that you are developing is uh, not properly uh, not properly chosen in the receiver circuitry. Uh, 